I have to go. I'm meeting Perry near his office. Maybe Mark slept at the office. He used to do that on the weekend sometimes, remember? You don't know where he went last night? To a meeting, that's all he said. Maybe he came in late and left before we woke up. I sleep on the floor, so if that happened, I would have felt footsteps or been hit in the face by the door opening. Anyway, I was up all night reading this book about the Protestant Reformation. I left him two messages. I don't think his phone is even on. Can you please tell him to call me? Tell him that I'm worried, I guess. But that I had to go. This guy's an agent. I understand. For as long as I've known George, he has, in his darkest hours, sought relief in the history of human thought. Perhaps most compelling to him has been the ancient idea of predestination, that whatever happens in life is foreordained, meant to be, and that human choice, free will, has nothing to do with how you ended up so miserable. The early church fathers rejected this notion, but by the time we had Luther and Calvin and the others tearing apart the West with their protests, divine election, the idea that some are chosen to be saved and the rest are not, was a fairly popular notion. It scared the shit out of Shakespeare. To him, such a thing would render life nothing but a poor player's fretful role upon a stage in a pointless play written by an idiot. But I like the idea that none of this is our fault and that we really shouldn't feel all that sorry. God may be a bad playwright, but I do believe he exists. I was thinking about all this when I looked up and noticed a church. Goodness is what it is. Goodness. That simple. Goodness brought me back up, reminded me that I'm not in this for me. To be important, to be rich, powerful, loved. No. No. Thinking that, expecting that is what drove me crazy. Drove me to drink and be alone and watch porn all the time and spend money on shoes and anonymous sex and sex with my friends' husbands and wives and grown-up nieces. Goodness what reminded me that I'm in this for the thing itself. The thing, not myself, not me, my status, my whatever, but it, theater, nothing else. I know, I know what you mean. So there I am out of rehab and I'm like, what agency in this town is going to give me a second chance, right? Are you kidding? Well, the agency you least expect. Stone fucking Danzig. Stone Danzig. The famous asshole? Hired me. Kind of as an assistant, but kind of but not, um, but like a, a junior agent. And he'll totally let me bring in clients on my own. And that's you, my old sweet little friend. Yes, you'd be my first full client since my breakdown. I cannot tell you how grateful I'd be. I'm the grateful one? You... A great actress. Are you kidding? I haven't auditioned in years. In LA, all I did was waste my waitressing money on dumb classes until it was so pointless I stopped at all, except waitressing. But you're in a play that's so great. You have no idea how great that is. And the Kowalski is a great, sweet theater. I can totally convince Stone to come down there and see you. Oh, this. This is like so positive, you know? This. See, this is what happens when you choose goodness. St. Jude, my name is Mark, Actors' Equity number 004961. 
I'm an actor and playwright who's lived in this city for 20 years. I have never prayed for a break, but at this point, I have no choice. I appeal to you, good saint, ask God to please, please, kill me. Did you bring him? Let me see. Uh, they're old, though. Gorgeous. Oh, you know what you'd be good for? Oh, God, I saw this earlier on the breakdowns. She's not here? She had a meeting with an agent. Oh, that's great. You mind if I sit down? Why would you ask me that? This is your room. I prefer to stand. Where were you all night? I... fundraising. Who's the donor? Jerry Burke. How much did he give you? He gave me, in support of our theater project, toward the $2,500 budget, which I have already spent, a total of $99. What did you do for it? Don't ask me that. First we kissed. He kissed me. Then he took my clothes off, moved me into another room, where he lay me down. Then he removed his briefs and revealed himself to me in that way, and I nodded. Then he pushed me onto my back, spread my legs, and entered me. I was in such pain that I asked him to stop, but I think I just said, wait, and he, rather than stopping, changed positions. He did that twice more, and after some hours, he was finished with me. I lay there, stiff and cold. He took a shower. He offered me water, but seemed irritated now, distant, like he wished to be alone. So I gathered my things got dressed, moved to the door. I turned and said, would you care to make a donation for the play I came here to discuss with you? He didn't reply, so I repeated it. He rose, sadly, walked across the room to a desk, and wrote out this check She handed to me, called me a bad word, and said, get out. None of that really happened. So she's meeting with an agent.